This discussion of horizontal asymptotes is supposed to follow the one on vertical asymptotes. So if you have not watched that video, you may want to do that before continuing with this video. So horizontal asymptotes, of course, are going to be very similar to vertical asymptotes in many respects, but also a little bit different. So uh, what you have in front of you, probably you recognize already as one visual illustration of a horizontal asymptote. But we want to look a little bit more uh, in detail and more deeply. For instance, would this be a horizontal asymptote? What do you think? And can this be a horizontal asymptote? Does it still satisfy the definition and the concept of a horizontal asymptote? Well, let's see what that definition of that concept are. So an accurate definition of a horizontal asymptote goes along the same lines as that of a vertical asymptote. Namely, we're going to say that a function of f, f of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals l if one of these two situations occurs. Either the limit as x goes to negative infinity of our function is some number l, meaning that this limit exists and it is an actual number. In that case, the graph of the function will look something like this, where the horizontal line you see would be the line y equals l that we call the asymptote, or maybe the graph will look more like this. So in both cases, the function is approaching that line. Uh, again, intersecting or not intersecting doesn't matter, and we're going to revisit that uh, soon. Uh, but the important thing is that the curve and the, uh, the line are becoming closer and closer. Now, these are not the only two situations that can happen. We're going to see another one soon. The other limit condition that is associated with a horizontal asymptote is, of course, on the other side. So we're going to say that a function has a horizontal asymptote if the limit as x going to positive infinity of the function is going to be some finite number l. In that case, the visual impression that we're going to get from the function is going to be either like this, or the function still approaching the asymptote but in a different way and once again there may be other ways in which the function can approach the line. Once again I encourage you to notice how the definition is all about limits. Uh, the only thing I've said about intersections is that they do not matter. Uh, and again we're going to go back to that in a second. But first let's look at another issue. When do horizontal asymptotes occur? We saw that vertical asymptotes occur very frequently with the presence of fractions. Well, the same thing happens with horizontal asymptotes. Typically, they do occur with fractions. And they do occur when something like this happens. You're trying to compute the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of the function. And you end up with a situation like this. You're going to end up with some fraction, which is some kind of number on top. And that number may even be 0. And some quantity on the bottom, which is becoming huge, big, without any bounds, and then plus you have some other quantity which is approaching this value L. So in this situation what we have is we have a denominator that this time is becoming very, very big, and because in a fraction with a big denominator the value of the whole fraction becomes small, that the whole fraction eventually is going to become zero and is going to leave us just with the value of L. So I uh, like to call this Roberto's Law of Gravity just to uh, uh, parallel my uh, law of balloons that we had earlier. And so the idea is that when we have a very heavy bottom, uh, we're going to have a situation where the whole function is going to be pushed into a floor. So what happens here is that as we're going to positive infinity, there is something very heavy that is going to push the function closer and closer to this horizontal line. And just as we saw for vertical asymptotes, uh, there is a good analogy that we can use for when the function is approaching from the bottom side and it is to consider that maybe we are down under in Australia and our heavy thing is actually reaching the line but from the bottom up. Okay, so once again remember this is just an analogy, it's a way for you to remember it. If it works fine, if it doesn't work, don't use it. The more important thing for you to remember is that this is what typically occurs, it doesn't have to occur. In fact, in other situations we may have horizontal asymptotes occurring without the presence of an explicit fraction. For instance, the function f of x equal e to the x has a horizontal asymptote on the left. As the exponent goes uh, closer and closer to negative infinity, or if you want further and further away from 0 on the left hand side, e to the x becomes smaller and smaller and becomes in fact closer and closer to 0. 
So while a fracture may be a typical symptom that might suggest the existence of a horizontal asymptote, um, they don't have to be there in order for the asymptote to exist, nor does a fraction necessarily imply a horizontal asymptote. We're going to look more at that once we uh, learn how to resolve uh, the indeterminate forms associated with this kind of uh, situations. Um, but for now, just remember again, uh, the whole thing is about limits and typically it's associated with fractions. What about intersections? I promised you that we'll go back to this uh, issue, uh, this idea that seems to always come together with asymptotes, but it's not really part of the concept of an asymptote. Well, horizontal asymptotes, just like ver vertical asymptotes, can intersect their curve. But in fact, it's the situation here is even worse because they can intersect them infinitely many times. There is a very simple example of that. If you look at the function sine x over x, and you look at what happens as x goes say to positive infinity you'll notice that the function is going to intersect the x-axis which is its asymptote many many times so it's going to be intersecting that line the line y equals 0 infinitely many times and how do I know it's an asymptote well just look at the function itself the numerator is always between negative 1 and 1 because that's one of the properties of sine x so it's always a small number fairly small number on the other hand since we're going to infinity the denominator is becoming big huge without any bounds. So the value of that fraction it can become as small as we want it to be. Alternating between positive and negative values and therefore creating a whole bunch, infinitely many intersections, but still approaching the line and therefore having that line as an asymptote. However, there is a restriction on horizontal asymptote. We can, for any one function, we can only have one horizontal asymptote on the left and one on the right. So the largest number of horizontal asymptotes that a function can have is two, one on the left, one on the right unlike vertical asymptotes for which a function can have infinitely many, just like the function tan x. The reason why this is true is, of course, that we're dealing with a function. So for each value of x, we can only have one value of y, and therefore, as we go to the left hand side, the function cannot approach at the same time two different uh, curves and getting closer and closer to them. However, there are functions that in fact have different asymptotes and the easiest one is the inverse tangent function. You may remember this from your high school, if not you may want to check with your calculator and you'll notice that this function has two distinct horizontal asymptotes. On the right hand side the function is approaching pi over 2 and on the left hand side it is approaching negative pi over 2. But again this is the most that can happen, one on the left, one on the right. And the way to look for these two possible horizontal asymptotes is to look for the limit of the function as x goes to negative infinity on the left and the limit of the function as x goes to positive infinity on the right.